Since the beginning of time, man has been obsessed with power. From amassing great fortunes, to possessing endless knowledge, to gaining a mastery over time itself, it can be said that we continually seek to dominate the world around us. And so, for many, ritual, rooted in ancient practices and belief in an other world, has been a way to satisfy this desire for control. Rituals and paranormal games, both modern and ancient, are described as being able to impart secret knowledge, and even, for the bravest participants, send us back in time. Some of the most obscure of these rituals are thought to be the most effective, and most dangerous. What is more terrifying is that these mystical games are whispered to be best played alone. And whilst I do not recommend playing any of the paranormal games featured in this video, I can propose an alternative. Raid Shadow Legends. Control the world in miniature without the risk of soul-shattering supernatural consequences by playing this incredible game. You can play Raid anytime, anywhere, it being available on desktop and mobile. Hone your strategy to challenge terrifying 10 dungeon bosses. Customize champions, dwarves, orcs, the undead, knights. With over 460 champions to collect, there's something for everyone. Raid has over 200,000 clans and 25 million players worldwide. There are infinite ways to play. Raid's attention to detail is one of my favourite things about the game. Look at these champions. You can enjoy playing with monstrous creatures such as Rocktooth without having to summon them in a candlelit room at 3am in the morning. This month, Raid is having their biggest update ever, the main event being the delightfully named Doom Tower. 120 floors, secret rooms and 12 utterly terrifying bosses. To help you get started, the Raid team is giving you a special champion, Bulwark. So, if you want a huge head start, click my special link in the description, and be gifted your free Void Champion, 50 gems, and more. For the next 30 days only, you'll find extra rewards in your inbox. It's that easy. Simply check out the link in my description. And so, without further ado, let us begin, and discuss five of the most obscure paranormal games that you should never play alone. For as long as there have been books, people have used them ritualistically to communicate with the dead and for divination. In ancient times, books such as the Homeric epic, the Iliad, were used, whereby the participant would ritually pick a page and sentence, so as to reveal the answer to that question. In medieval times, the Bible became the primary focus for such magic rituals, and thus these games fell under the category of bibliomancy. In modern times, especially in Latin America, a new variant of these historic rituals has come about in the form of the Red Book Game. The church and other spiritual organisations strongly discourage playing the Red Book Game. They regard it as invoking evil forces. Indeed, many warn against playing this forbidden game, for the spirits that it is said to conjure are claimed to be unpredictable, with some even reporting that they can cling to a participant and damage their life. Much like when using a talking board, respect and procedure are necessary when playing the Red Book Game. Although this game can be played with multiple participants, it is said to be most horrifying when played alone. The game is fundamentally simple. All you need is a red hardcover book of any title, at least one red candle, and matches or a lighter. When you are ready, retreat to a dark and quiet room. Sit down. Light the candle or candles and place them in front of you. Similarly, place the book closed before you. Then, put your hand on the book and ask, Red Book, can I enter your game? After the invocation, with eyes closed, open the book to a random page, and place a finger somewhere on the paper. This is the sentence selected by the power of the ritual. Open your eyes and look at it. If the selected sentence can be interpreted as positive, then you have made contact, and have permission to play the game. However, if it is negative, or does not make sense, then the game has not started. If you are brave, you can continue to ask the question until a positive answer is given. Once permission has been granted, you may now ask your question. As before, speak it aloud. The procedure that follows is the same. With eyes closed, select a random page and sentence. Then, read the sentence and interpret the answer. When all the questions you wish to pose have been asked and answered, it is said to be very important to conduct a closing ritual. 
One way to do this is by asking the book if you may leave the game, in the same way that the other questions were asked. If the answer is not positive or it is nonsensical, then you must keep asking until the game allows you to leave. Another alleged closing ritual involves repeatedly telling the spirit of the Red Book game to leave, and hope that they do. However, for peace of mind, the previous method is often recommended. The closing ritual is said to be the most important part of this game. After all, it is claimed that the entities which are contacted via the Red Book are very eager to stay in the participant's life. Eleven Miles is a ritual with origins that can be traced to a fictional creepypasta. Since then, it has taken on a life of its own, being transformed into a modern-day paranormal ritual that, when performed correctly, is said to be able to make your deepest desire come true. Journeys have great traditional significance, from the ancient Greek epic tale of the hero Odysseus, to more modern spiritual journeys of awakening and personal development. Much is said to be able to be discovered when on a journey. The Eleven Miles game plays to this concept, with some who have played it claiming that their lives were forever changed, for both better and for worse afterwards. All you will need for the Eleven Miles ritual is a vehicle. Whilst it is said that it can be performed using a motorcycle, a car is strongly recommended, for the protection that the enclosed space will provide you as you go on your journey. Other than this, there are a few non-negotiable conditions of playing this paranormal game. First, do not, under any circumstance, leave your vehicle until the ritual is finished. You should also make sure all the windows in the car are up, and not opened at any point during the journey. Next, this is not a race. You should not drive faster than 30 miles per hour. And finally, you must travel alone. To perform the ritual, it is advised that you wait until night when there is less traffic on the road. Turn off your radio or CD player, and do not use any electronic device such as a phone for the duration of the game. When you are settled in the car, start to drive. The first stage of the ritual is to find your road, namely the road that you are searching for, the road that will lead you to whatever it is that you desire. It is said that you should drive to the woods, specifically a longer road that will lead you to and then through the woods. Drive slowly and keep an eye out. The road you are looking for will not have a name, but you will feel it when you find it. You will be drawn to it. You may even see glimpses in the trees, peripheral or within your mind's eye, of the thing that you desire. When you find the road, turn onto it. Stop now if you need to. When you are ready, you will begin your first mile. It is said that nothing much will happen for this first mile. You are told to drive slow and stay calm. You may begin to feel cold, so turn on your heating if you wish. As you drive into your second mile, you should really start to feel the temperature drop. It will be colder, and will continue to get colder. So, if you have not already, it is recommended to now turn on your heater. Mile 3 is when things are supposed to start to change. Drive carefully, you may see shadows in the trees. They may even look like people. Try not to look at them. Resist the urge. Continue driving. During mile four, the shadows are said to get closer to the car. Once again, do not look at them, keep your eyes on the road. At this point, you may even start to hear whispering voices. Try not to pay attention to them, regardless of how human they may seem. As you enter your fifth mile, the forest will disappear, revealing a clearing containing a lake with a still reflective surface. As before, resist the urge to look at your surroundings. Keep driving. You are now halfway, and as you journey into your sixth mile, the woods will return. It is now that things are said to get really uncomfortable. The headlights of your car may start to flicker. Your radio may even turn on. Whatever urge you have to engage with it, do not. Do not attempt to turn it off, and equally, try not to listen to whatever the voice playing over the radio is saying to you. Just focus on reaching mile seven. Now, the shadows from earlier will return, as will the whispering. According to some accounts, the shadows may even scream at you, sounding as though they are getting ever closer. They may even feel as though they are in the car with you. Do not turn to look at them. Keep your eyes ahead at all times. As you enter your eighth mile, you are instructed to slow down, but do not stop. 
By now, it should be very cold inside your car. Keep driving. Brake if a sudden pothole appears, or if your headlights flicker, but do not stop. It is said that if you do, the shadows that are following you may get too close and try to surround you. At mile 9, your vehicle may stop. If it does, calmly close your eyes, take a moment and try to restart it. Do not under any circumstance open your eyes as you do this. Once it restarts, you are instructed to quickly finish the mile, keeping your eyes closed until it is over. Or, at the very least, do not look at the shadows as you drive. Mile 10 should be calmer. The shadows and the whispering should be gone. Even so, you may get the urge to look into your rear view mirror. Do not simply keep driving. If you have made it this far, you are almost done. However, the most frightening part of the ritual is said to be yet to come. As you enter your 11th and final mile, your car will supposedly once again lose power, but continue to move. Allow this to happen. At this point, you may see a red light up ahead. If you do, you should immediately close your eyes. As bright and appealing as the light is, resist it. The rules of the game also instruct you to cover your ears, as it is said there will be horrifying sounds coming from that red light. You must endure, and resist all temptation to look. When your car restarts, you should open your eyes, catch your breath, and continue driving. You have finished your 11th mile. The ritual now instructs you to continue driving until you reach a dead end. Once you get there, stop the vehicle, close your eyes, and focus all of your energy on your deepest desire. Whatever it is, picture it in your mind and hold on to that thought. Think about all that you have just experienced to get to it. When you open your eyes, you should be where you began, at the beginning of the road. And so, the ritual is complete. All that is left for you to do is claim your prize, the thing that you desired. If it is a material item, you are instructed to check the back seat or boot of your car. If it is something intangible, you should return home and continue your life as normal. If you have performed the ritual correctly, the thing that you desired should come to you in time. In the world of folklore and superstition, the colour red has a mixed reputation. A universal colour of passion and romance, it is also connected with prosperity in countries including China. And yet, for many, the colour can signify something more sinister. Danger. Blood. Even the devil himself. It is perhaps then no surprise that many paranormal entities are associated with the colour red. From the impish harbinger of doom, the Nan Rouge of Detroit, to red-eyed werewolves and bloodthirsty red-cap goblins, one such unearthly entity is the Red Man. Whether this being is one entity or many is unknown, but he has been sighted all across the world, most famously as L'Homme Rouge at Paris's Palais des Truilleries. He is said to have been first sighted at the palace as early as the 16th century, and is claimed to have been encountered by several famous figures in French history, including Louis XVI and Napoleon Bonaparte. In all cases, he is described as being clothed from top to toe in scarlet, with eyes so piercing and unearthly that they terrify even the most courageous of people. Most encounters seem to suggest he is a harbinger of death often appearing to people before they meet their end. And so, those who have not encountered the dreaded red man can sleep easy, surely. Well, for those who would desire to, it is said that the red man can be summoned through a ritual. The precise origin of the red man summoning ritual is unclear. Some say it originated in Japan, with red cloaked entities being present in folklore there also. However, given the seemingly global reach of the Red Man, it is impossible to say either way. Whatever the case, those who have reported on the game warn against playing it, stating that the Red Man may very well be dangerous. Even so, the ritual is described as relatively easy to perform, the required equipment being a quiet room, a piece of paper, a writing implement, scissors, five candles, matches or a lighter, two mirrors, and red lipstick. It is said that the ritual must be performed at night. Make sure the curtains and the door are closed. It must also be quiet for the summoning to work. 
First, draw the simple shape of a man on the piece of paper and cut it out. Next, draw a line down the center of the man-shaped paper. On the left side of the man, write your name. On the right side, write Rubeus, meaning red in Latin. You should also draw a pair of eyes onto one of the mirrors using the red lipstick. When this is done, position the two mirrors so that they are opposite each other, a distance of about 12 inches between them. The mirror with the eyes should be placed on the left. When they are positioned, place the paper man in the space between the two mirrors. His left side facing the left mirror, his right side facing the other. He should be placed face up so that the words are visible. Whatever happens, for the duration of the ritual, you should not look into either of the two mirrors. Next, take your five candles and place them about the paper man, surrounding him with a candle at his head and one at each of his five limbs. You should then turn off the lights. The summoning may now begin. Proceed to light the candles one at a time in the following order. The one by the paper man's left leg first, then his head, next his right leg, then left arm, and finally his right arm. Once the candles are lit, take your scissors and cut the man's body in half, along the line that you previously drew down the middle. Be sure to keep him within the circle as you cut him. Once again staying within the candles, move the left side of the man's body closer to the left mirror, and the right side closer to the right mirror. Now close your eyes and say, please come, please come, I will not leave until you come. In order for the ritual to work, it is alleged that this should be said six times. With the incantation complete, blow out the candles one at a time, head first, followed by his left leg, right arm, left arm, and finally his right leg. The red man should now be in the room with you. Be warned, however, that upon completion of the ritual and later dismantling of the setup, he may linger. For this reason, those who have performed the ritual strongly recommend never using the two mirrors ever again. The candles and paper man should also be disposed of. It is advised that they be buried far away from where you live, so that there is no chance of you ever encountering them again. The oceanic nation of Kiribati has a rich history. Comprising 33 islands, the area has been inhabited for centuries, quite possibly millennia, with some suggesting that the first people to live on the islands did so as early as 3000 BC. Although the island nation was colonized by European nations before eventually gaining independence from British rule in 1979, Kiribati has retained its unique language and traditions, culture and folklore. One aspect of the indigenous folklore is the belief in the power of ritual and magic. One well-documented ritual from the islands is Te Kaiwa, or the love test. Today, it is sometimes referred to in English as the love me game. The purpose of this ritual is divination, to determine whether or not the participant is loved by a specific person. The ritual involves invoking Te Rakonini, a spirit god of Kiribati folklore. According to legend, Te Rakanini, a great warrior from one of the islands and his wife, were one day snatched away to become spirits. Ever since, they have been revered by the indigenous population, with Te Rakanini being regarded as a god of love. As such, the Love Me game instructs the player to summon the warrior spirit to help divine the state of their own love life. According to instructions written by Arthur Francis Grimble, a British civil servant born in 1888 who wrote a book about the islands and their traditions, in order to play the Love Me game, you must first consider the name of the person whose feelings about yourself you wish to discover. It is important to keep this person in your mind throughout the ritual. There is no special time or day to invoke Te Rakanini, and so when you are ready to begin, you should pick a pinule or secondary leaf from a coconut palm. With this in hand, you should carefully tear the pinule in the middle, by about half an inch from the side but without severing it in two. Holding the main part of the pinule in your left hand, take the thumb and index finger of your right and gently pinch the torn part of the leaf, and proceed to slide it through those same fingers, drawing them away from you and along the length of the strip. It is important to be gentle, so as not to tear the pinule any more than you already have done. 
Repeat this action again and again, and as you do, whisper the following incantation, substituting the phrase that girl for the name of the boy or girl who you wish to divine knowledge of. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Tell me, Tay Rakanini, does that girl desire me? Tell me, does she hate me? Tell me, does that girl love me? Tell me, and tell me, and tell me. It is said that you should repeat this invocation three times. When this is done, once more draw the pinyol through your right thumb and finger, but this time detach the strip from the base of the pinyol by tearing the end straight off. Discard the portion of the pinyol in your left hand. The answer you seek lies in the torn portion you now hold in your right. The traditional ritual then instructs you to hold your index, middle and ring fingers together and place them on top of the pinyol, your palm facing up and your ring finger lying along the bottom edge of the strip. Where your index finger ends, make a crease on the strip. Next, wrap the pinyol around these fingers three times, tearing the strip off at the point where it completes the third turn. When this is done, unwrap the strip from around your fingers. You should now carefully tear the strip down the middle lengthways, once again being careful not to tear the pinyol completely in two. You should stop once you reach the crease. The pinyol should now look like two tongues, or rather, a forked tongue. When this is achieved, you must, still considering the name of your beloved, tie five knots along the first of the two tongues, being sure to tie the fifth knot at the extreme end. Repeat this process for the second tongue. It is now time for interpretation of Te Rakanini's wisdom. If the two end knots are level with one another, the person you have been thinking about does not love you. If one projects beyond the other, they do. Some sources recommend that in order to complete the love test, you must perform the ritual twice. The second time, the inverse results are true. The person loves you if the knots come level with each other, they do not love you if they do not. Although this game is thought to be a harmless way to find out whether or not someone secretly loves you, there are warnings against invoking the spirit god. Invoking deities, even if you think you know what you are doing, is never recommended, especially as some warn that Te Rakanini has a darker side and can be unpredictable. Not only might it be dangerous to seek forbidden knowledge from a spirit god, it has also been said that the purpose of the love test can be inverted, and instead be used to summon Te Rakanini to perform an act of deadly vengeance on someone who has wronged you. This version of the ritual involves plucking a strand of hair from the head of the person you would see punished, and tying it around your thigh. After keeping it there for three days, you are instructed to burn it, and invoke the spirit god to place a death curse on your chosen target. Although I do not advise performing any of the rituals described in this video, the final ritual comes with the severest health warning. There is no known way to reverse the alleged effect of this ritual, and so, unless you truly and unhesitantly wish to relive a time in your life that has already passed, do not attempt to perform any of the following instructions. The Black God Ritual is a Japanese ritual game that challenges the very concept of time, and whether or not there is a way to turn back time. Although its exact origins are unknown, it appears across the internet on several Japanese websites, with heavy warnings invariably attached to it. The ritual involves an awareness of the Rokuyu calendar, namely a traditional Japanese date-keeping system that is said to predict whether there will be good or bad fortune that day. There are six days in a Rokuyu week, and the Black God ritual requires the participant to perform the ritual as the clock ticks over from the evening of Sensho to the early morning of Tomobiki. According to Japanese belief, Tomobiki is a day when one may find themselves drawn to death meaning that funerals are strictly avoided on this day. When you have identified a suitable day to perform the ritual, gather the following supplies. A candle, matches, a permanent marker, and a timekeeping device that does not make any sound. 
A room in which to perform the ritual is also required. It is said that in order for the ritual to be effective, the space must not only be quiet and empty, but also square in shape, and at least 261 meters or 857 feet above sea level. Next, you should decide which point in time you would like to return to. It is said that under no circumstance should you select a date that predates your birth, or a future date. Before you attempt the ritual, you should also ensure that you have no debts in the present day. Once this criteria is met, you are ready to begin. Shortly before midnight, close the door and draw the curtains in the room, to ensure there is no light visible within the ritual space. Similarly, turn off all electronic devices, unplug them and remove all batteries. There must be absolute silence in the room for the Black God ritual to work. The only device in the space should be your chosen time-telling device, providing that it operates in silence. There should be nothing in the room, no furniture or other items, other than yourself and the few supplies necessary for the ritual. Turn the lights off and move to the center of the room. It is important that you do not turn the lights back on or use a torch or flashlight until after the ritual is complete. Using the permanent marker, write the date to which you wish to return onto the candle. The date should not be written anywhere else. When this is done, place the candle on the floor in the center of the room and sit cross-legged in front of it. Now, light the candle. It is important to keep an eye on the time, as the clock changes to midnight, signaling the change from Sensho to Tomobiki, you should hold your breath. At 12.01 am, you should exhale, then say the Japanese phrase, Yo Natamo, meaning the world. Chant it, repeat it, say it again, for as many times as you feel you must. When you feel ready, stop and fall to silence. If you have performed the ritual correctly, it is said that you will have traveled back to the date you wrote on the candle. If you do travel back in time, there is no known way to return to your original time other than by living through the days and naturally arriving back there. According to those who have researched the ritual extensively, even unsuccessful attempts at performing the Black God ritual can cause terrifying side effects, including chronic debilitating headaches, being involved in a major life-threatening incident within a year of completion, and a weakening of your mental and physical state. And so, perhaps there are just some games that we are not meant to play. Thank you so much for watching, and an extra special thank you to all of our members. If you would like to find out more about some other paranormal games and rituals, why not watch my previous video on the subject if you haven't yet seen it? The link is on screen now. Until next time.